To understand the story of agriculture in Iowa and how it became the most altered geography in America, you have to first imagine how the land was before and paddle through one of the last preserved wetlands left in Iowa with Lewis Major, a Polk County naturalist. Unless you were one of the first waves of pioneer settlers to see this land, it vanished nearly a century and a half ago. And it didn't take long for uh, the prairie to slowly get transformed from tall grass prairie into uh, farm fields and, and uh, crops. About 95% of our wetlands have been drained or destroyed. And currently we are one of the most altered states in the United States of America. The great altering of Iowa started in the late 1800s when farmers began growing corn. There's a saying here, corn doesn't like wet feet. So to transform wetlands into productive farmland, early farmers devised an ingenious system using underground pipes or tiles to lower water tables and draw water off the land. They dug trenches, mostly by hand, and planted thousands of miles of pipes often in patterns called the gridiron, the herringbone, the double mane, and the natural, which resembled a leaf. In taming the landscape, they even reshaped waterways, carving meandering rivers into straight open channels. These drainage ditches soon appeared across the state, helping farm tiles convey water quickly to streams and nearby rivers. This conquering of water and nature helped Iowa become the perfect place to grow corn. Lots of corn. And soybeans, too. In fact, these are the two dominant crops grown on some of the world's most highly productive agricultural land. Advances in industrial agriculture have led to ever-increasing yields of these two crops. Crops that grow in fertile soils rich in nutrients that farmers have to continuously reapply during the growing season. Using a fertilizer made with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Scientists who examine soil know that nitrifying bacteria breaks down some of this nitrogen fertilizer into nitrates and these nitrates eventually find their way into nearby groundwater. From there, they get carried away by Iowa's highly efficient network of underground pipes and drainage ditches. These eventually connect to local waterways like the Raccoon River, which flows toward Des Moines, where it's used by a city of 500,000 people. And that's a problem, because it turns out that nitrates aren't the best thing to have in your drinking water. Blue Baby Syndrome, and a number of other health effects including cancer, thyroid conditions, and diabetes have all been associated with ingesting nitrate-contaminated drinking water. That's why back in 1974, Congress passed the Safe Drinking Water Act. It mandated that the Environmental Protection Agency set maximum contaminant levels for nitrates in drinking water. At different times in the year, the Raccoon River flowing past Des Moines exceeds that number, and not by a little. In fact, the runoff from upstream farms forces Des Moines Waterworks to spend almost a million dollars each year to inspect and remove nitrates from their drinking water. So the Des Moines Waterworks went to 10 drainage districts in three counties upstream from Des Moines and measured nitrate levels. What did they find? That nitrates, in some cases, were over three times beyond legal limits established by the Safe Drinking Water Act. And so they decided to do something about it. Court, the Des Moines Water Works Board voted this afternoon to sue three Iowa counties. 
The members blame runoff in those counties for high nitrate levels in the Raccoon and Des Moines rivers. There isn't even a basic understanding and appreciation for the danger uh, that we face as providers of safe drinking water to you as central Iowans. The board believes the high nitrates come from farm fertilizer runoff. Folks at this packed public meeting agree. Our water stinks. Take a glass of it, leave it remain overnight, and smell it. When students at Iowa's Ames High School heard about the Des Moines Waterworks lawsuit, they wanted to see for themselves how corn and soybeans are grown and how they contribute to the state's drinking water problems. They traveled by bus across the state on a whirlwind tour led by their biology, English, and civics teachers. They met environmental lawyers who helped explain the Des Moines Waterworks case. While USDA scientists showed how new approaches can help farmers decrease nitrate runoff. They also met soil scientists at Iowa State University who use new organic farming practices to reduce nitrate leaching into groundwater. They even traveled to the headwaters of local rivers, measuring water quality at the source, then followed that agricultural runoff from field to drainage ditch to river to sea in order to understand who bears the responsibility for the state of their drinking water. Then they returned to the classroom using Project Localize and the principles of project-based learning to find solutions to Iowa's water problems. Des Moines Waterworks has one of the most sophisticated nitrate removal facilities in the world, but even that isn't enough to keep their drinking water clean. Regardless of what happens with the Des Moines Waterworks citizen suit, farmers can do lots of things, from planting cover crops that sequester nutrients to using wood chip bioreactors that filter out nitrates right in the field. USDA scientists are also proposing conservation practices to help farmers reduce nitrate contamination. And if voluntary compliance fails, farmers could be governed by mandatory rules and regulations that guide them in becoming better stewards of their water and land. No matter what happens, this experience has taught them to learn from their past, from what Iowa once was, and to find new ways to grow food that feeds the world not just for today, but for generations to come. To learn more about terms like point source pollution, tiling, nutrient sequestration, riparian buffers, maximum nitrate levels, and the Clean Water Act, visit lexiconofwater.com for a collection of people and words that can change the world.